I'm a big fan of the found family trope. There's something so heartwarming about watching complete strangers finding a place to belong by sticking with each other. It's the basic underlying principle of practically every superhero or vigilante team. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy builds off this premise to deliver an incredible story about what comes after the found family trope. As anyone who is a part of a family can tell you, the regular struggle to maintain those bonds is what really takes effort, and that's at the heart of Guardians of the Galaxy, a game that says that a family, once found, is worth fighting for. Gardeners of the Galaxy? What? No! Rocket! So, I let Groot fill out the paperwork. I fixed it with an addendum. Not the most well-known heroes you could hire, but definitely in the top five of most awesome names. Guardians of the Galaxy picks up following the creation of the team, all of whom have some sort of history with one another. The origin story has already occurred, and the player is now catching up on what the characters already know. Though I can see how this setup could confuse players who aren't familiar with Peter Quill, Gamora, Rocket, Groot, and Drax, the setup ultimately works to the game's benefit. Guardians of the Galaxy regularly moves beyond familiarity, digging into the wonderfully bizarre cosmic side of Marvel's universe, all of which is so absurdly alien. So, uh, this is the thing you had to do? Come to the observation deck to look at the rift? No. I came to honor the memory of my family. And yet, it's all very human too, and that's why it works so well. These might not be the guardians you're familiar with, but the issues that they're attempting to deal with and overcome are all deeply relatable. The same can be said for the increasingly strange assortment of allies and enemies the guardians meet. You latch onto their issues and pay attention to them because they're the parts of the story that make the most sense from a human perspective. That more than anything captures the sensation of being Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, a human who finds himself regularly exploring a galaxy far removed from the goings on of Earth, and yet as an Earthling is ideally suited for navigating these galactic issues because he can bring out the innate humanity of these aliens. For what it's worth, Nikki totally saved my butt. She handled herself really well, you have every reason to be proud of her. Coming from you, Peter, it's worth extraordinarily little. You apply Peter's human perspective via your own with choice-driven dialogue. You'll regularly be presented with opportunities where Peter can respond to conversations in multiple ways. Your available choices pop up for a limited time, and those around you usually don't stop talking while Peter is thinking, presenting the opportunity to say nothing at all. Sometimes though, missing a chance to speak is a risk worth taking, as holding out to respond can occasionally allow you to gather more information about how everyone is feeling by listening to the conversation. You're being evasive, woman. Wait. Woman? That's the nicest thing you've ever called me. I told Peter Quill I would try. That is not the point. The insect woman has embarrassed you. Not wanting to discuss it is your right. I... I appreciate you saying that, Drax. The act of listening to someone as opposed to just hearing the words is a big part of the game's narrative core. The overarching campaign of Guardians of the Galaxy isn't affected by the choices you make, but individual relationships and certain story developments are influenced, and the best outcomes only occur if you listen to what people are saying and reply in a way that responds to their concerns. Oftentimes that results in immediate consequences, but there are a handful of opportunities where your choices early on can have long-standing effects, and it's deep deeply gratifying to see the game reward you in later conflicts for being a good listener throughout the course of the campaign. Knew this would come in handy. Where'd you get a Nova Passkey? Nikki gave it to me, to keep it away from her mom. That campaign sees the Guardian struggling to pay off a massive debt in order to avoid being arrested, a task that ultimately gets the five self-described heroes for hire tangled up in a galaxy-wide threat. This game isn't reinventing the traditional superhero story, and you'll likely foresee several of its twists and turns, but it's well written and well sold by the fairly impressive motion capture and superb voice talent that bring life to an otherwise by-the-book story. We cannot present this pathetic creature to the Monster Queen of Sektoff 9. She will laugh at us. Maybe we can use it as bait. I knew those thumpers wouldn't work. What? My thumpers are state-of-the-art. Musclehead's the one who rushed at the first thing that came through the door. My head is not made of muscle. Between the bouts of story, there are a lot of baddies to shoot. From murderous Jello to an assortment of supervillains, the Guardians face a variety of threats throughout the game. Each foe seemingly encourages you to approach the threat in different ways. A target carrying a shield suggests you need to find a means of flanking them, while a more nimble, beast-like enemy may seemingly prove difficult to attack if you can't pin them down. I say seemingly because it's an illusionary variety, and one that is easily seen through after a few hours with the game. 
Early on, the game advertises each guardian as uniquely qualified for responding to these specific threats, but none of that is necessary. Every enemy can be damaged by all five guardians, so you can just as easily spam the same attacks over and over to win a fight. Despite each guardian unlocking four abilities, I never found myself having to use more than their first two to overcome a fight, and so fights ultimately devolve into ever longer grind fests as the number of enemies grow more plentiful and their health bars extend ever longer. The game includes multiple difficulties, including a custom level where you can adjust practically every aspect of combat, quick time events, and dialogue choices to incredible detail. You could crank up the game's difficulty in order to create more of an incentive to use each guardian to the best of your ability, at risk of a squad wipe for nearly every encounter, if you want an extra challenge. That said, doing so isn't intrinsically increasing the level of strategy needed to beat the game. It's simply making enemies into harder hitting bullet sponges so fights become longer, not tougher. In the event a fight wasn't going my way, I could easily turn the tides with a team huddle, a mechanic I love but which feels underutilized. Why have you called us off the battlefield, Peter Quill? Our enemies are melting before us! The huddle mechanic is like the Guardian's ultimate ability, charging throughout combat and best save for when all seems dire, or you want to lay on the damage and finish off a tough opponent. It sees Peter call his allies to him, allowing them to group up and express how they're feeling about the fight. You then get a choice of what to say to inspire the group, with the team being fully revived and their ability cooldowns reset if you respond to your allies' concerns. <laughs> it is magnificent, Drax! Unbelievably, insanely magnificent! <laughs> right? Like a fork in supernova! So stay on track, keep your eyes open, and shoot for the stars! Who's with me? It's an interesting mechanic insofar as it ties combat back to the narrative core of the game, providing a metaphor for how being a good listener is important for cultivating a strong family that supports each other. It's not so interesting a wrinkle that it washes away my problems with the rest of the unremarkable combat, though. When you're not telling your allies what to do or propping them up, you guide Peter, who controls like your traditional third-person over-the-shoulder shooter protagonist. Peter can free aim or lock onto targets with his dual blasters, using his jet boots to dodge enemy attacks. There's not much to it, you're mostly just holding down the trigger and taking the time to dodge away from an attack or cool down your guns to keep them from overheating. But even when you do miss a dodge, you don't take much damage, and even when your guns do overheat, you don't have to wait too long to start firing again. You don't have to think very hard is the point I'm trying to get at. The game is designed with a focus on Peter giving his allies orders or support, which ultimately ensures that Peter himself isn't all that engaging to control in the heat of combat. Over the course of the campaign, you also unlock four different kinds of elemental ammo for Peter's blasters, allowing you to unleash special attacks that can take advantage of an enemy's weakness. Those aforementioned Jello monsters, for instance, normal attacks don't affect them that much, but if you use ice ammo to freeze them first, they'll become brittle and easy to destroy. Much like Amora, Rocket, Drax, and Groot's abilities, however, the game doesn't adequately push you to engage with these special shots. It's a mechanic that, once again, is asking the player to be strategic, but then not providing any incentive to meaningfully engage with combat. This elemental ammo, alongside your allies' unique abilities, also play a role outside of combat. Guardians of the Galaxy features an assortment of environmental puzzles, a few of which hide optional collectibles and cosmetics, will most simply impede progress through a level. Save for one or two puzzles, however, none really encourage you to think about how to use the Guardian's skills in fulfilling ways. If you're stuck and the way forward is blocked by some pipes, for example, you can command Gamora to cut through them. That puzzle never becomes more complex, though, so you'll just keep encountering pipes or equivalent obstacles for her to cut through. The same can be said for all of the different types of environmental roadblocks you have to overcome. You'll encounter pretty much every type of puzzle the game has within the first few hours, and then just keep stumbling upon them. Assassin! Calm down, I'm just going to the bathroom. All paths eventually lead to Peter's ship, the in-game hub you regularly return to between the planets of the Guardian's visit. It's not much of a hub. Though it provides opportunities to have optional check-ins with individual members of your crew, these conversations are largely inconsequential and lack the emotional or narrative impact that occur throughout the rest of the game. Occasionally, your time in the ship also has you manning the helm. These sections aren't all that fun. They're either frustrating flying gauntlets where the ship's finicky handling regularly leads to death-inducing crashes, or boring combat encounters where the simplistic mechanics and scenarios don't create engaging dogfights. Between the irrelevant optional crew conversations and unlikable space battles, the ship segments end up being the weakest parts of the game. On the other end of the spectrum, the soundtrack is one of the strongest aspects of Guardians of the Galaxy. There are plenty of excellent licensed 80s tracks sprinkled throughout the Guardians' adventure to highlight badass story or combat moments, but the original score sells the game. The thematic undertones to each world help differentiate the various settings, while evolutions to the score accentuate shifts in narrative tone.
Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy doesn't feature an engaging combat system, save for the moments where the team huddles provide a loose connection to the much more engaging narrative theme of the strength of communication. The game instead shines via its storytelling, which is enhanced by a talented collection of voice actors and a wonderful soundtrack. If this game is your introduction to the Guardians of the Galaxy, it's not the best first impression, but sometimes when the galaxy needs to be saved, you can settle for good enough. <laughs> and we're laughing, that's good. It's just, it's perfect. This is us. This is how we park. <laughs> well, this is how Quill parks anyways. <laughs>